We've been filming these series of videos for um, Hawaii Master Food Preservers on, actually it's like seven TV shows on jam and jelly making, acidified products, uh, high pressure canning, dehydration, fermentation, pickling, and then some other miscellaneous things, you know, processing fruit, all of that. And it's been going really good. It's amazing what you can do with local products of, uh, of all kinds. So I'm just in, been getting into that, pretending they're on TV. And here I get to pretend again. Yeah, right. And, and this isn't pretending, that's the great thing. Oh, yeah, that's, well, yeah. That, that, that isn't either, but it's, um, uh, you know. So are any it's of the major networks picking you up? Well, a actually Amazon expressed some interest, but it's more because my brother's a VP there, I think, than anything, but you know, I'll take it. I'm Open not, doors. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I think, you know, the, the idea of, of talking story is, is uh, excellent. You know, we, people come here every Saturday and talk story about ag and ask all kinds of questions and the, w the one thing I always tell them is I you got two choices because the first question is what should I plant I don't know what do you like to eat but you got two choices you know it doesn't matter if you're selling it or you're just growing it for you you still have two choices you either grow things that fit into an existing market like avocados mangoes citrus or you grow new things like ma praying and uh, tampoy and meringue and champadec and, and you know it all depends on your location and microclimate elevation and these other things but within each one of those there's there's choices now within each one of the things where there's existing markets uh, I suggest it's good to look at the USDA statistics for instance we grow and sell a million pounds of avocados and we import uh, somewhere between three or four million pounds and and that was in 2008 so today who has any no, nobody has an idea of, of what's really imported because they stopped funding the that they who's, don't want us who is they well the industry you know stopped funding uh, the importers basically forced well we're not going to give money for that kind of statistical analysis anymore. We don't want people to know how much you're really importing. And you know, the HDOA does their best to estimate, but it's still an estimate. But even if you go back to the 2008 statistics, you've got this, um, this boy. So we, we grow and sell a million pounds of avocados and we import four million pounds and according to a UH project that was done in 2012 we waste about seven million pounds that just fall and we don't do anything with it's going to be more this year because the avocado lace bug but that's another story um, so that's me but we grow we import we grow and sell a million pounds of oranges but we import 22 million pounds you know, 12 million pounds of tangerines, 4 million pounds of lemons, 3 million pounds of grapefruit. Why are we importing this? There's no need for it. So how do we get to from one point to the other of supplying ourselves? Well, we need workers, we need land. I mean, they just put in thousands and thousands of citrus trees on Maui with that in mind, but they didn't put in windbreaks or water lines, so I don't, I don't I heard something like 12, 13,000 trees died out of 20 some thousand trees. So people have to think through the whole system, you know, from beginning to end, not just, oh, I want to plant something and stick it in the ground. You have to think, what are you going to do so that it survives and so that it thrives? And then when you got, you know, one or two fruit is one thing. What do you do when you have 500 pounds of fruit on your avocado or your orange or your tangerine? Well, we'll just give it to people. Well, if you give it to people, that's, that's a problem because 
the real farmers who are trying to make a living off of. That's kind of the problem I have with gleaners. I mean, there's nothing wrong with gleaning and harvesting things if it's going to food banks, but it's not all going to food banks. And I really don't care what they say because I, I know the trees, I know the fruit, and I see this out at farmers markets. Our farmers, do, we need education. Our farmers don't understand cost of production. You cannot sell six Meyer lemons for a dollar when it costs you 28 cents to produce one. It just doesn't add up. So when I told this to a woman once at a, at a market here, she goes, what are you, the fruit police? And I started thinking and, you know, as a matter of fact, lady, it's a, well, I didn't say it quite like that, but yeah. I mean, somebody has to teach cost of production to farmers because it's not really getting done by UH, and it needs to be. Um, you know, Bob Dylan said money doesn't talk, it swears, right? It does. UH needs money so they can do stuff like that. The Department of Ag needs money so they can fund statistics so that farmers can make choices based on accurate, up-to-date information. Well, if we're Im importing 4 million pounds of avos and 22 million pounds of oranges, which market is it easier to get into? You know, where are you going to sell your, your crop? So. Well, the, from, from that perspective, I had an avocado, a small little avocado farm in Fallbrook, California. And you poor guy, you never even tried a real avocado. Yeah, have well, you? All, all we had were, were two. And the thing is, is that you know, I looked at Calavo, yeah. and it seems like Calavo is the, the main supplier of avocados almost in the entire world. I yeah, mean, they're, they're, they're huge. And so, uh, when I moved here and I saw hundreds of varietals of avocados and saw how phenomenally delicious they were and and, uh, and and just everywhere I thought how is it that those real estate agents in Fallbrook were marketing it as the avocado capital of the world when really all they all they grew was Haas and, and Fuerte and here you can grow just about every varietal there is throughout the entire season and yet we just were allowed to export our Sharwells and and there Malamas are coming soon. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but there's got to be something a little off with that. Oh, it's it's all politics. I mean, did not you know those California signs that they put up there that no fruit flies are allowed yeah. beyond this sign? You didn't know fruit flies can read, did you? Yeah. Yeah. And, and even the ones languages? that have cataracts like me, yeah. they they put up uh, signs that are blurred so that they become in focus well and then you have the mexican cartels and what are they doing i mean that is just insane they're they're forcing the fruit flies to go to california yes, they are. <laughs> i have no idea at gunpoint no doubt yeah um i i don't know the whole idea so i i happened to go to safeway yesterday to bring the produce manager one of our one of our calendars which i just happened to have here now, when I say calendar, it, it's a perpetual calendar, so it's like here's January to February, oh, and nice. all it is 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 produce, fruit, and proteins by the month of you know whatever uh, whatever you want to get. You know oh, that is incredible. So I brought one to Safeway yesterday, and he's he's putting avocados out, and he said I don't know how we got these. You know, because I thought they banned, he's asking me, I thought they banned all the Mexican avocados. I said, they did. And I grabbed one in the stickers, avocado from California. Wow, it's like the old days. It's from Randall's neighborhood in California. I couldn't believe it. So they're back, California Haas, at least at Safeway. Of course, that's, you know, $4 for an avocado like this where go to a farmer's market and get an avocado like this, maybe even like that for two bucks. Two bucks yeah. yeah, maybe a buck for one of these, yeah. or Sharwell, buck 50. It's, it's really hard to say, it's never consistent. And again, a lot of people don't know cost of production. So 
We, we had a client in Japan who was buying all the seeds for a buck a piece. You remember, you, were, you, you contributed. Seeds. Sure, right. yes, of course. So I can always use more, by the way. Okay. Um, more. Yeah. So the, but I could go to our farmer's market and buy avocados for 50 cents a piece, take them back, wash it, wash it off, and, you know, make money off of them. Make, make, make guacamole for yourself and, 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 and yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much so. I mean, so a lot of it doesn't make a lot of sense. It makes it makes sense dollars and cents for some people, though. Well, you, you, but it doesn't. I mean, you have to sell at a minimum of a dollar. It costs you. Oh, well, you have to. Yeah. Yeah, but they know they're selling fifty cents a piece because it's cheaper than everybody else sells them, for. and so, so that's that's the problem. People sell because they think people buy it cheap, and. and you know, I just got back from Dubai and, and, and kind of representing the fruit growers and, and the state, you know, in terms of showing everything that we grow. And people could not, what are you selling? Well, I don't really sell anything, but here's the farmers that sell this and the farmers that sell that. You were representing the farmers. The farmers of yeah. Florida. So um, I gave out thousands and thousands of business cards of farmers and then great little companies like Anthony's Big Island Box. Yes. You know yeah. that? And um, um, Barbara's uh, and Charwell and, well, and the, the uh, thing uh, is, is Ava's that, tea. You know, the yeah. tea we have is amazing. It's amazing. Good. Well, the thing that I wanted to ask now, we are prevented from selling our avocados to the to the mainland the U.S. So, so the United Arab Emirates, yes. Dubai, Abu Dhabi, that is the USA's largest agricultural trading partner bigger than Japan, Korea, China, bigger than all of the countries that were Mexico, Canada. The largest is the United Arab Emirates, according to the lady that runs the Ag Trade Office in Dubai. And she said this at, at, at a party for all the um, American vendors there. And so I, I, I thought that was pretty um, I incredible to hear. Yeah, and so I, I had checked with APHIS you know, animal and plant inspection service for USDA. Uh, we can ship avocados to Dubai. We can. Yes. Now, if you have a large quantity, they suggest that you have an import permit from from the UAE. Makes sense. Is that difficult to get? <laughs> no, not really. You're you're the person there who was buying them should just go in and get it. And get it. Okay. But you can ship gift boxes. So. One of the things back in back in the day when when Japan had a boycott of uh, American rice, you know, it wasn't buying any rice to help their farmers get their yes. business back together. You know, like we should be boycotting avocados and citrus from Florida. We should have boycotted years ago, but uh, the government here was afraid of being sued by Florida, even though that their citrus have seeds which carry HLB or citrus greening disease it's a it's another story so and i get sidetracked easily and then get lost so that's all right you're back in the truck yeah, yeah so uh where where was what it? you were you were talking about the gift boxes oh so the gift boxes of avocados you can send a box of five six ten avocados to the uae without just take it to express mail and send it over there now you want them when they're mature and not ripe just course, because yeah. of the time it takes yeah. but people don't here don't know when to pick avocados for the most part anyway there's very few people who correctly know when to harvest yes. avocado and we learn about Sharwell they don't know when to harvest Yamagata or Kahalu or whenever and so our reputation of having watery avocados you know, elsewhere outside of Hawaii, that's because when we harvest them too early and they manage to get someplace or people here buy them at a farmer's market when they're visiting and ooh, it's watery and they open it and water's dripping out. It's because they were picked a month too early. And it's because the people that picked them just bought the farm. They're used to Haas like, you know, little baby Haas, not realizing it's a Murashige and it gets like this, you know, yeah. so it's not going to form well. It's not going to develop sugars and oils. 
and it's going to be watery. So we have that's more education that we have to learn. And there should be an extension agent, or actually UH should take Ty McDonald and put him in charge of avocados in the state. Absolutely. Instead of floriculture. Sorry, Ty, I don't know if you want to hear this or not, but you're the best avocado guy in the state, so why not take care of the farmers in avocados? And by the way, Ty is coming to do the grafting. Oh, he will come and do the grafting at the Avocado Festival. That's great. April 2nd. Holly April Hallowai. 2nd, Holly Hallowai. <laughs> yeah. that, get that cheap commercial yeah, plug in there, right? He'll be there at 11 a.m. And the Mango Festival is? The Mango Festival is going to be on August the 6th. August the 6th. No, no, excuse me. Yes, August the 6th. August the 6th. Yes. You yeah. Get your signs out earlier I, this time. I am going to okay. everything. And I, I just booked Holly Hallowai for uh, nine different occasions. Okay. And I, I just thought since since I pay for event insurance for the year, whether I have one show or nine shows or yeah. twelve shows, it's yeah. the same amount of money. So yeah, kind of, sort of. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. So well, the insurance is the same, but you got to pay Holly Hallowai oh, two oh, grand yeah. each time, right? Well, yeah, but that's okay. I mean, you okay. know, I don't mind because the the thing about these festivals is that. You know, people really need to have <coughs> something that gives them a sense of joy and also allows people who live here in Hawaii to sample avocados and mangoes and mac nuts and coconuts and all of the other things that we have. Well, especially now, it's more than a sense of joy. People need to come out of this two-year cocoon they've been in. Yes. Yeah, and, you know. and become the butterfly that they deserve to be. So, this is, this is Sorry. Uh, I'll buy one of those from you. What? If you have one. What? Oh, you, can I give you one another? No. Oh, here. No, and, and you asked me about Miami. Miami always gives me her, her, her new books. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, same here. Are you going to see her now? Uh, well, I, I've got to be back by three, but I think that I'll have time to see her. Yeah. Unless you want to keep going, because there's always... Oh, oh yeah. I still well, I miss well, being with so Avocadra. Got to bring Avocadra. Well, we must. How? Uh, help me. How? Is she still willing to? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. How can we get this going? Okay. I don't know. I, I, I would mean, there love has it. to be one of those rich sheiks that that's into superheroes or something. There's... Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm hoping that that will. Yep. I should have had her poster up. I didn't think about it. That would have been great. I already got the company there to promote it. Vic you do? Yeah. yeah. Victoria Hassan. She's she's um, was born in Jersey, but she's been living there for years because her husband's a pilot for Emirates, and oh. they're both of Ar Arabic uh, ancestry. Yeah. Oh, I, I think she might be maybe Lebanese or something, but but she speaks fluent Arabic. So yeah, I, I I thought she was from there originally, so I wrote her in Arabic, and she's like, "What?" Wrote back because I sit and, me and crammed and memorized the Berlitz Arabic guidebook, so it was a, it was amazing. a lot of fun. Amazing, and Emirates airline. I, Emirates is amazing. They were, I mean. Just regular class was better than any first yeah. class I'd ever yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Emirates, Emirates has this one thing. Um, Emirates has one thing I really like when you go to. The bar. So, they have the ceiling is like two levels. So when they turn the lights out, there's little pinholes in the ceiling, and it's like the stars. The stars. The Milky yes. Way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was lucky enough to get bumped to uh, first class on um, Etihad Airlines, the Abu Dhabi Airlines. Never heard of them. Oh, they're they're great. They had a shower, uh, probably the size of my garage. Really? Yeah, in first class. Actually, they had two showers, and it was like both sides of the airplane, and you know, and all you had little halls, ha yeah. uh, hallways to go in the front, and then these massive showers. Amazing. Oh. Amazing. Well, when I was on Emirates, um, all of the... Uh, I kept thinking you were saying Emmerich. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, Emmerich, yeah. I haven't seen him for a while. Oh, How he's doing, doing fine. Yep. Yeah, that guy's bulletproof. 
Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. In his, in his 80s, he just keeps going keeps and going. going. The yeah. original Energizer buddy. And the community really owes this guy a lot, too. I mean, he's the first one to send Kona Coffee to international competitions and things like that. He was? But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's he was in charge of Hilton Food Service for Hawaii, for the state, back in the 60s. Yeah, I... He yeah, knows yeah, his he's, stuff. He's, he's, you know, he, was, he was just talking about economics one time, and he just said, I don't know what's wrong with you people. I mean, you could just go out and, you know, pick some things, and you could make, a, you know, I, he said, you could make forty or $50,000 a year if you wanted to work. Well... Labor is such an issue here. I mean, well, trying to get to it. If so. you wanted to work. Well, yeah. So, um, one of the guys that came to Dubai with this was uh, Doug McKenna from Geisha Kona Coffee. And Doug's working on a plan now to bring in workers from the Philippines, you know, with housing. And then people would be able to hire the workers based on a day or two days or a week or whatever it worked out to. You yeah, know, I and I met a man from the from the county that was actually working with that. Or was it from the state? I I, I don't recall. But yeah, he was I I on, don't know, but on, on bringing people in and housing them and having them do agricultural work. Yeah, but this would be this island, and people have been trying it for for years, and now the the Mexican guys like Romero I mean they bring in their their their, their workers yeah. well no it's, even after that families are all here already but they bring in uh, you know workers that they know and trust which is good and that's how we have such a large Hispanic community um, and then they tried with the Thailand workers because the, the Thais always want to get back home and the Filipinos I mean they um, they always want to get back home too eventually and so it's um uh, you know it's hard to say everybody in working in dubai i mean the, you know it's 80 percent of the population is from somewhere else yes in this yeah. city the size of chicago or osaka uh 80 percent are from the philippines india pakistan russia i mean it depends on the type of job so the women workers in all the stores and restaurant hostesses, they're all Filipinas. One, they speak English and, uh, you know, some usually two or three other languages. Yes. The Pakistanis are all the taxi drivers. The Indians are the managers and hotel workers and run some of the markets, like the, the big fruit market was, you know, two acres. And, and if for Dubai that I, I went to, you know, the Russians are other hotel workers. So, for instance, Chef Yuri was at the restaurant at the Marriott. Really nice Russian kid. So I, I ordered this parsnip uh, hummus. Wow. Oh my God, it was amazing. And then the, the manager hummus. of Just this, about that. Of the food and beverage manager, she somehow knew who I was because, you know, cause Chef World is small and we, I'd worked in India. So he. He, he he knew me and he so he introduced me to Chef Yuri and this is his creation. I, it's just fantastic. So I wound up ordering it like four days in a row. I couldn't I get enough why. of it. Yeah. And I've never I mean that's something that I would never ever even think about. Personally. Yeah, so putting roots hummus. into hummus, you know, yeah. instead of beans or lentils yeah. or something. So um yeah, it was fantastic. Amazing. Just fantastic. Amazing. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna play with that and turnip hummus and rutabaga hummus. And so uh, uh, regarding that, I, I mean, going there as the representative of your, as the executive director of the Hawaii Tropical Fruit Growers and, and with the uh, Hawaii Department of Agriculture. So so here's, here's one of the stories that happened, sorry, before I forget, yeah. is that um, we don't grow everything. So one of the ministers from Saudi Arabia came by and he said, um, and I was looking at them and they're in their, I think it's Thobe or something, the, the white gowns. Yes, yes, yeah. uh, anyway, really nice guy. So we started talking and he said, well, real question I have, Hawaii, 
First, I had a Hawaiian flag on, which confuses everybody because they don't know if we're Brits or Brits Americans, or not, right? right? Exactly. And yeah. I said, we're, we're an island stuck in the Pacific that the Americans stole in 1898. Right. Well, and as soon as you say that, oh, you're, and plus, I'm wearing a long kurta, I right? That, I saw photographs of you, and I was so proud of you, Ken. So I'm, I'm yeah. wearing this kurta in the American section of this trade show, which is like the size of eight football fields. So right away... People thought, oh, he's safe to talk to. He's wearing a kurta, right? He's not, you know, some off crazy American. Well, well sorry, not, I'm he's, still he's, a crazy American, but yeah, he's not but, some suit. But right? I'm yeah. I'm I'm culturally sensitive, right, right, to to that. Plus, they're as comfortable as all all well, hell. Now, so this, this show, uh, this. So anyway, the Saudi guys, the Saudi. <laughs> yeah. So he can't. I can't. Uh, we he wants to get U.S. He wants to get Saudi dates into the U.S. market. And to be honest, almost every date is better than what we get now. It's just the same thing as commercial. We get peaches and apples. They're, they're great for baseball practice, but they don't taste like real fruit. Right. I can't eat store-bought grapes anymore because it's like I'd rather eat chalk. You know? So here, wow, real dates in the U.S. I mean, that's, that's, and I'm thinking, oh, Bill Gerlach. So, to make a long story short, I fix him up with the guy from Melissa's. Yes, okay. And yeah. we're going to order, and it's going. Oh. The Sultan of Saudi Arabia came and gave me a and box of dates. That are just, just, no, I mean, just, so, I, people kept saying, well, you're not selling anything. What do you do? I said, my job is to help farmers. Really? Yeah, I don't care where you're from. I mean, my first uh, is, is... Hawaii, of course, you know, yeah. that comes first. And the second is Japan, because I'm still re the Japan Avocado Commission and Yonemoto and those guys. I right. feel an obligation to work with them to help Japan agriculture. Um, and then I don't care what country you're from. If I can help you as a farmer, whether it's an agriculture question or marketing question, I'll, I'll try. I, I don't, you know, here's a number. I'm not going to make deals for you. But I'll, I'll know people who might be I, able I to put help. I connections together. And, and that was the, the wonderful thing when I went to Oman to get that frankincense, which to me is mm -hmm. the finest frankincense in the world. Uh, the, the person that I was dealing with was, um, uh, he was amazing. He was like yeah. a, a, a royalty. I mean, yeah. He, he had a, a, a home that was like at least four or five stories. He had servants and, and all yeah. this stuff. He was a chic from, no, uh, from from but he he was bringing me out dates. Um there were red and yeah. green and blue and brown. I, I'd never tasted anything. Oh. So like, if like you that. if you really want to have good dates in the US you have to go to Thermal or Indigo, yeah, yeah. California, right? right? right. And yeah. it's not that far from Fallbrook. No, it's well, just down well, well, we, I, the road. You know, I used to go and, and, and get date shakes and dates. Yeah. Oh, and it things. shields da dates. Dates yeah. all the time, you know. And, and, and the thing is, is that, is that but, but that's the, the date capital of, so, of, of the United States. But to get dates that, that I tasted in the Middle East was to me something that, yeah. that just put me in, in, in this like, oh my God, this is some of the most incredible things that I've ever had. So Vince, who runs the USDA, uh, he's the farm manager for the USDA collection in Thermal, really yes. great guy. And his wife, his family was one of the first date families when Fairchild sent dates back to the U.S. for the first time ever, you know, in the 1898 or something. Yeah. Um, the uh, he's got some uh, um, just uh, amazing types of dates there for you to for you to try. But he showed me the book that the one of the Saudi princes came to visit the USDA collection, and they gave him the Saudi book of dates. Oh my God! And he he brings it out. It's huge, you know, like this, and it's like all gold pages and things, and it's. Wow, this is, and it, each page is a different date, you know, mm. and it's like 3,000 pages. Oh, amazing. amazing. And he said the book cost 
caught, he said he wanted to buy one for his friend, but he looked into it and it was like sixteen thousand dollars for this <laughs> book because it's all <laughs> real gold leaf and stuff. But yeah, it was great. It was just uh, so. Anyway, I had all these Saudi dates, and then you go into the section. The, ama the amazing about golf food show is you get to experience things that you don't normally, as an American, get to exhibit. Now I travel around the world, so. For me to go get Iranian figs, I can just I know where to buy them in the store in Japan and just pop them in and eat right. them. But I never had they don't have Iranian dates in Japan, but they did there at the Iranian exhibit, and you know it's just like 50 of them lined up that you could just sample. Amazing! It, it is. It was just an incredible thing, and you know people say, you go there. There's a million people at this show. A million people. A million people came to this Gulf food show. Not and actually nine hundred and eighty-six thousand. Okay. I think was the official. Now, uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, aren't you worried about COVID? When you get off that plane in Dubai, up the nose, and they check you right there. Uh, to go into the World's Fair, Dubai Expo. Yeah. You know, you have to show your Vax card. Right. Right. So I, I didn't have a problem with it. I mean I had an N95 mask on the yeah, whole time. The whole time? Okay. So, uh, but I, I wasn't, I, for some reason it just, you know. Well, well now, this is something that I found very fascinating when I, I was there is, is that uh, the people that I was dealing with in regards to this frankincense uh, journey that I was on, I noticed that these people uh, they were in Oman, and Oman was extremely wealthy. Uh, the, uh, the, the sultan at that time, Sultan Qaboos, uh, he, he was building infrastructure out. There were, there were roads, and there were desalinization plants, yep. and hospitals, and, and everybody there had a car and a cell phone, and nobody knew how to drive. It, 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 yeah. was, it was hilarious, and, and, and I was actually involved in an automobile accident when we were there. Oh, I, I mean, they were, they, they just didn't know, you know, it, it, but hmm. however, in their, their genetic code, their, their DNA, they're traders. Okay? Yeah. They, these people were dealing with the likes of Marco Polo in those days. Yeah, right. And, and, and there's integrity. I mean, so much integrity in regards to what they do that the that the suits in in Wall Street would would never ever ever be able to hold a candle to these men in regards to to the way that they did business. Yeah, I mean they're they're tough businessmen, but man, yeah, they're they're good. They're great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. They're better than good. I mean, no, I yeah, I, I I agree with that assessment. I mean. Um, I was lucky. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't there to wheel and deal and sell things, you know. Yeah. I was there to to help people make well, connections, and and so that worked out really well. And I think the connections with the Saudi and with actually a bunch from Oman and could have been your friend for all could, I know. Could have been. Yeah. I yeah. mean, there were a lot of people from from Oman there, and uh -huh. they had a huge exhibit. Of the uh, pro foods from from Oman. Yeah, and by the way, I'm getting. Um, Let's go back. I'm getting ten thousand dollars worth of frankincense shipped tomorrow from Oman, and uh, and 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 what's very very cool about that was. I, See if they want some real avocados, because all they're getting is from <laughs> Sudan, Sudan and Kenya. I'll bet they do. And of course, Mexican Haas. Yeah. Yeah, but I'll bet they and do. And they've never had real avocados to try there. Yeah. That so would be, well, so that one would... of the things that I want to do if the Avocado Association gets their act together, and I think David Cox is coming around who does do the shipping. Well, well, um, well I, and, I knew David when he first moved yeah, up there yeah, and, same and here. You know, bought Herb's place. Yeah, yeah. so but him and Barb and... and uh, um, to start these things, I think we need uh, 500 pounds or so of avocados mm -hmm. that that will ripen within a week, and we need to bring them there with avocadra and just have her give out absolutely 
taste. You, you just gave me chicken. And, 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 and they, should, they should take, or, I mean, we have a problem. People, so, so when I said this before to people, oh, no, we need to buy them here first. You know, we need to feed our people first. We do need to feed our people, and we need to feed our people avocados. But we also need to get money from the outside. If, we only, if we're only buying our own stuff, if we're just recirculating what we have. We're not bringing in anything new. So there has to be a delicate mix of both. And it's, sometimes it's not easy to balance how much we keep for ourselves and how much we export. Whether we, it doesn't matter where we export. If it's easier to sell to the UAE, fine. You know, if we get them into Japan, fine. If we, if we, look, Japan used 74,000 tons of Mexican avocados, 74,000 tons. If we took out every tree in the state and just planted avocados, we couldn't produce 74,000 tons of That's avocados. Right. That's right. Plus what they're growing in, in southern Japan, you know, if we took it out, all the trees in Japan and just planted avocados and all the trees in Hawaii and just have planted avocados, we still need half of California to produce that many avocados. Exactly. Well, Ken, this is this has been so exciting. I'm I'm just uh, I'm so thrilled that I get the opportunity to to talk story with you in regards to what agriculture truly is here in Hawaii, and and how we can promote it. And for me, especially, I mean, I I feel that. You know, avocados for me are my meat because I don't eat flesh foods. And, and I look at the different types and varietals of avocados here, and, I, and I'm just in, in awe over... Oh, it's... It, there's, they're, it's they're amazing. You, you know, I'm originally from Chicago, although I've been around here for ever. But I can still remember going to a, a, a Mexican restaurant in Chicago, and I grew up in a place about one-third of the population was was uh, from Mexico and um, I said I don't want any of the green stuff on, on, on and so they bring out my order of tacos with guac would you please get that green shit off my tacos I hated avocado I mean I can't believe I I hated it and I never ate them I there. Love it. I never ate them there. You know, it was imported hard. Oh, good. Let's see if I can hit this with a bat. You know, boom, right through the neighbor's window. Um, <laughs> the um, in in so next door at my other house, my son's house. Yeah. So there's a big avocado tree right at yeah. the edge of the and it drops cannonballs. Uh, I since found out they were Thompsons and they're great. Uh, rootstock and they're not but there's you know you got a avocado like this and a seed yeah, like that yeah. but and you got a little bit of meat yeah so uh, Morris came over once to do some electrical work and he just picks one up and he cracks it open and he starts well this is not bad you know for a seedling and he's oh you, you actually the, eat that you stuff ate that stuff yeah, yeah. Ugh. oh no it's pretty good try it no oh, I don't want it you know try it you gotta try it Ah, oh, Jesus, leave me alone. No, try it. I'm not moving till you try it. So he made me try it. Amazing. What is this? It's not avocado. What is it? It's avocado. It can't be avocado. It's good. I had never tried an avocado I liked until I had this junk seedling on, on the tree next door. And that's only 30 some years ago. Amazing. So, I, yeah, it was. It was really amazing. And I think um, I learned a lot since then, you know. Now we're really lucky because I know where the original avocados are, a lot of them, that we can graft, like from the original Yamagata tree. So our Yamagatas are different than what you would normally get because that was grafted a uh, tree from a graft from a graft from a graft you know 15 generations where I'm grafting from the original and there is degradation over time you know you yeah. lose some of the DNA I guess but there is a difference and so between that and then developing new ones so I made one called Mr. T after Mr. Takashiba who was my uh, Morris's uncle and my first teacher here um, 
Not that other Mr. T. No, I was, I was yeah. thinking. Oh, you were thinking, yeah, yeah the no, other Mr. T. I pity the fool who don't like <laughs> avocados. So. Uh, yeah, I know who you were thinking of. But that's a, that's a whole other story <laughs> it's, uh, about him. Um, so, Ken, in, in, in regards to this, um, I, you know, I was really excited when you brought the agricultural almost uh, entire commission from Japan to our avocado festival and uh, the idea and maybe the idea about the possibility of shipping our avocados to, to Japan which which hasn't happened yet but the thing is is that you know what the problem is can't get the USDA in Washington to send the official request they're all waiting in Japan in the embassy, the Japanese Ministry of 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 uh, it's, it, they combine, so no sui sancho, uh, waiting for for they're okay with it. Everybody's okay with it except the USDA has to make an official well, request. Well, is it following the money or how is it done? Uh, you got to go to D.C. and kick somebody in the ass. Whether it's our senators and they kick it, APHIS in the butt. There's not so much money to be made as there is from working a deal and allowing more imports well, from well, Ecuador well, and well, well, Chile and all of that. So that you know, I, I just find it very bizarre that you you don't have fruit flies and aphids and things like that from Chile and Ecuador and Mexico, but you do from Hawaii. Yeah, isn't that I, amazing? I, I mean, how, how does that happen? Well, it's real simple, because if any of those places, in California included, tasted our avocados, they wouldn't eat Haas anymore. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. And you know, before Haas, you know what the number one avocado was? What? You grew it back in the day. You just said it before. Fuerte. Fuerte, yeah. Fuerte was... Well, Wilson Popino brought back from Guatemala or from somewhere out down there, and that became the number one avocado until Rudolf Haas found his. Found so, his, yeah. Amazing. It is. So Amazing. now, you know, and Charwell is actually an Australian but one, but if you take uh, Malama or Kahalu, and we work with those, even even uh, Daily Eleven that won the, the had the Guinness Book of Records for a while. Yes. That came here from Ventura in 1947. It's not right. But it does better here than Ventura, yeah, Ventura just like yeah. Charwell does better here than it does in Australia. Yeah. So it depends on individual microclimates too. So it's not you can't just plant everything everywhere. Right. You well, know. well, well, that's understood. And the thing is, is that you know it's. Uh, well, it was like me. I came to, to Hawaii and I wanted to, to grow something and, and, you know, you try to find affordable land and most of the land here is pretty expensive. So you go to Kamehameha School of Bishop Estate mm -hmm. and they're all saying, grow coffee, grow coffee, grow coffee. And the farm that I, that I was on that I eventually bought, you know what kind of farm it was? Before this guy planted coffee? Yeah. It was a Chiramoya farm. Oh, oh that, had, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chiramoya everywhere and I thought are you insane <laughs> you know, cut it down did you do that? <laughs> and now it's hard to find cherimoya it is. well it is it is and I had six beautiful cherimoya trees mm -hmm. that I was getting like wholesale two or three dollars a pound easily well now it's easily six fifty seven dollars yeah. a pound wholesale yeah yeah it's amazing and so you know um, I don't know, Ken. You know, I'm really looking at, at how uh, our present is is evolving into the future and what we can do. And, and I am just so there's no there's not one thing. It's it's a series of everything. You know, it's like I tell people: if I live to be 300, I can't do everything on the list. You know. <laughs> you just keep going until you don't go anymore. Well, that's, that's and so it's every component of what we've been talking about you know whether it's the growing aspect or the cost of production or the marketing or growing you know kahalu and malama versus something else it's um you know we have to go through uh, that kind of a process yeah that yeah. kind of process yeah. well well the thing is 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 uh, 
you know, working with 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 people like you and Mayumi Oda mm -hmm. and and this man over here in regards to to creating something and co-creating something. To me, it's co-creation. Mm -hmm. And all of us working well, together. Well, it all is. Yeah. yeah. And 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 what we've got is that. Our nonprofit sponsors uh, a, um, an LPFM community radio station. Mm -hmm. So we are doing this, what well, we're calling it uh, Aloha Sunday Live. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a live performance out at Miami Oda's beautiful, beautiful Ginger Hill Farm. Yeah, it's a great place. And and what I know where they got their fruit trees. I'll bet I, I <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you do. Right there. Yeah. yeah. And so the you know, the thing is <laughs> is that I'm I'm really looking forward to being able to create this bounty that the islands are specifically noted for, and and to be able to do this. Bounty. Yeah, the there islands. it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Bounty from the islands. Look, check that out. That is that is just so amazing. So what, and it what, is. What, what, will you tell a little bit about this? Well, yeah. I mean, this is what basically is a perpetual calendar that was put together by the Hawaii Master Food Preservers of what's available around the state. It's not limited to Kona. It's what's available around the state, be it fruit, uh, vegetables, or proteins. And I know you're not into proteins, but oh, I'm. I love proteins, but I love but two yeah, proteins. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I know the kind of proteins you like, and they don't go. Mm. Uh, nope. Nope. <laughs> and they don't squeal. Yeah. <laughs> I know that you are as well. Um, can can people contact you and and get in touch with you and your organization and and learn something? Oh sure. Um, HTFG htfg.org is our website hawaii tropical fruit growers org, and um just uh come by on a saturday 81-6393 mamalahoa and captain cook between konawina elementary and the shell station on the makai side of the road and we just have kind of a talk story or you come ask questions we sell uh, grafted fruit trees for 20 bucks, 25 bucks now, sorry. I keep forgetting the board said, you gotta go up from 20 to 25, which is still way better than big box stores at 75. But Absolutely, um, yeah. We have a lot of citrus that we just got in. And, and I've noticed together. that you've got uh, um, some some sort of- uh, Structure? Structure in the back, what is that for? <laughs> That's can a containment greenhouse yeah. back there that we can, uh, it allows us by permit to bring things in from overseas, the plants. And for we, quarantine? For maybe? quarantine for two years. Um, the containment means that we can write a special controlled import permit that um, for citrus and mango, for example, that you can't just bring in from overseas unless you have a containment chamber and recycle the water and treat the water, etc. So that's part of that but what we're finding we you know this was finished just in time for covid so i wasn't going anywhere to get uh plants so we're founding by by using this for cuttings of our trees uh, what we already have it works amazingly well so we can make clones of wax jambu and even rambutan we've got rooting out Beautiful. ume plums local you know ceylon or mysore peaches and pomegranates and just about everything from cuttings fantastic that so it works wonderful. yeah it works really well so um the next phase for you what is it uh, you know i i i'm so excited. yeah i tried to retire and i need a vacation yeah. from retirement yeah. no no i i'm i'm really excited about your um your trip to dubai because that was for me, going to Oman and, and getting this frankincense connection mm -hmm. was phenomenal. And, uh, and now that you know, I see what, what can happen, especially with, with avocados from, from that realm, I, I just think, my God, I want to really work with you on somehow, some way, establishing that connection between the islands and UAE. Well, you should go back to Oman 
and actually or go back to Dubai and see if you're Oman, you know, just a couple hour drive for them from Muscat to, to Dubai. To Dubai, yeah. 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 I mean, it's quicker than going to Hilo from here. Yeah, that's for sure, yeah. Yeah, I, well, I, I just ordered another $10,000 worth of frankincense, so I've got a really good... No, next time you should be able to trade that for avocados. Yeah, I think that I will be able to. Yeah, I, I think that's... That's definitely a possibility once they get, I would send him a case. Just no, thank you. You know, just send them five, six avocados, perfectly harvested so that they last. Put them in an express mailbox and send them. Good idea. I'm going to do that. You know, and say, this is, you know, what we're getting into. And we thought you would enjoy these. And hopefully they'll make it there in decent shape. Yeah. But well, I would, I would think so. Well, um, I'll find out because I usually get the the frankincense via um, let's see how does DHL. It send? No. Um, it how does it come? I mean, in a box. In how a box big? like that. Yeah. Like this, and yeah. that's ten grand. Yeah. Wow. For the oil. Oh, okay. For the oil. Oil. Oh, yeah. already yeah, processed. Get, uh, well, for ten grand, I get a lot of frankincense resonance. Yeah. 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 Of but, this, this. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. the oil. You see, and and I started to distill my own oil here, mm -hmm. and it was just so prohibitive in regards yeah. to cost. I yeah. mean, I, I I couldn't do it, and I told them that. I said, well, you know, I, I love your frankincense. I love I the quality, but I want to save the candle. Yeah, but the thing is, is that I I can't do it, um, and and he said, well, why don't you let us do it? And I said, well, if you do it, that, that's fine. Yeah. And if you give me a good price, that's, that's great also. And he said, we will. And so now I don't, I only buy the resin to sell and not, you know, those drinks. Yeah. Mm. It's just amazing stuff. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal stuff. And it's, um, and I love those burners. Yeah, that's very cool. You know, I've I, never I, seen I, one like that. And you won't. <laughs> I, I it's got to be that low candle, though, right? Yeah. It can't be the taller no, one. Well, is too well, hot. We, it took us a year to figure out how the distance. To, 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 to do the, uh, the actual uh, depth and, mm -hmm. and, and to put this on the back because it would blow out the candle yeah. and all kinds of things. And, uh, and we figured it out. I mean, it, it works very, very well. And... And, and they're attractive. Yeah. You know, they, they no, it's super nice. cool. So yeah. Ken, I want to thank you so much for your for your knowledge, your expertise, and most of all for your friendship. Oh, well, well, you always got that. It's, it's great. It's it's wonderful. So thank you. And uh, any closing statement? Any close? Just keep working. I mean, if you closing statement, you got to just keep at it. I mean, there's no, um, you know, why am I doing this at 70? Why are you doing it at 71 or two, three? I didn't know he was that old. Neither did I. Yeah, <laughs> but you're not. <laughs> and we, no, no, I'm and not. Pe pe and, and it's the same thing. People go to you, they think you're in your 50s. They think I'm yeah. in your 50s. But well, and, it's, and, and that's just and, and that. So my body is 20, is my, you know, my brain is 24 and my body is, is 90. Yeah. And so we got to settle on well, 50, well, I, 70. Well, I read a book by Deepak Chopra called Ageless Body, Timeless Mind. Yeah. And I'm really convinced that. It's like that, and, and when I was younger, and I was doing my weird, wild, and wonderful, natural, organic, whatever, uh, thing, I met a man. Mike Myers? From, the other guru? No. From Loma Linda. Uh-huh. Okay? Yeah. He was 84 years old, and this guy stood straight, tall, had all of his teeth, had white hair, he 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 drove he and his wife around uh, in the 1930s on a uh, on uh, an Indian motorcycle. Oh wow! Right? Yeah. And this guy was the most incredible, beautiful man that I'd ever ever met. Oh, who was that? His 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 name um, was oh gosh. Um, 
come to me in a moment. Uh, he, uh, he, was, he was making his, his own nutritional products, mm -hmm. okay? And, and he, made, uh, he made things for, uh, for relaxation, and, and, and he, would, he would bring in food yeast, nutritional yeast, mm -hmm. uh, from Red Star Foods. And the, the man mm. was just, he was the sweetest guy I, I really, really ever met. And he helped me out so much in regards to the things that, that, that I was doing. Dan Mitchell. And, mm. and, and he had the Dan Mitchell company, okay. and, his, and he had he had three sons. Mm -hmm. One was a um, was the director of the surgical department at Loma Linda. Mm -hmm. The other one was a um, he was a, a full on uh, dentist, and the other one was kind of a man that that really didn't get along with people. Mm -hmm. and, and what he did is that he had a he had a place out in Hesperia, yeah. and, and he made pet food supplements. Hmm. And and Dan would sit down and talk to me, just, mm -hmm. just like we're having this yeah. conversation. And he'd talk about his sons like they were like 10 and 12 years old. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. and these are grown right. men that are just... Right. And, 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 he, and he spoke so highly of his son that was out in Hesperia, just hmm. hiding from the world. Yeah. But making pet supplements. Yeah, that was it was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's very cool. So I had one of the people that affected me um, was my my grandfather's <laughs> sister's husband, okay. Ezra Kabaker, and he lived in Loma Linda, California, wow. and which is the blue zone, by the way. Yeah, um, he. Uh, He's been gone for years. So I met him. He was 84, and he came to visit. They came to visit in Chicago, and their son and his wife were still alive. They're in touch with my sister more than me, but um, they're in their 80s now. But he was—he had always been vegetarian. Yeah. And I, you know, well, that's as a, as a, as a yeah. as a ten-year-old in in. You know, Chicago, Chicago by the <laughs> stockyards. You know, like you just like, that? yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that, oh, it struck a responsive chord. It did. Like that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And just his his nature and attitude and energy and yep. at that age was uh, was pretty impressive. You know, for a ten year old for, kid for a who, younger person. Yeah, yeah, who had you know steak and hamburgers and meatballs every well, week we all you did. know yeah. yeah yeah you know i didn't after that after after yeah no i just i i wanted other stuff you yeah. know well what's amazing is is that the the influence that that people can have on you when they're not even trying i, I yeah. mean, like i said the, like it, dan it, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 it was just the, the demeanor of this guy it was like yeah. god you are amazing thank no. you yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I can, I can relate to that um, completely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and it was more really of a in business. It was more of a cooperation than a competitive type of model yeah. for them too. I, I mean, it, it wasn't that he wasn't well, successful that's, because that's, he was. That that's a good message to get across in this closing, is that because um, otherwise we'll go on and on for 16 days, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, is that we have to stop competing with each other and we have to start pulling together cooperatively, you know. Um, we have to stop worrying who's selling to who, you know, and trying to steal, you know, markets from each other. Exactly. That we have to really pull together to develop new markets. You know, yes. you have problems selling your avocados because everybody's got them at the same time. Work with me and going to Dubai next year. Exactly. You know, exactly. everybody's got. Hey, Curl. Hey. What's up, big guy? Look out so you don't get burnt, huh? Yes, yes, Gonna tell mommy about your dove you got today? He's not a vegetarian. No, no. Well, well, there. Right? Well, actually he is because he was screaming at me from the screen, hanging on the outside of the screen, wanting to, to come in with, ah, he got a big dove in his mouth, <laughs> you know. 
good boy, and he's gotten me three rats this week. Oh, that's good. Cool. Yeah. My lady's too old. He's to gonna get that. you. Oh, he, he's gonna get you. Oh, but he's doing. Man. He thinks you. Do you he, are you going blind or something? That is not mommy. Just because you have the same stringy same, blonde same, hair. Same kind of hair, man. Yeah. Looks like mom. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't sound like her, but looks like her. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>